So now they started focusing on who Christ is. I don't encourage you to go into the depth of this. It's going to give you a headache. But I'll just give you a touch. A touch of it, a taste of it. So who is Christ? We come to the, our beloved, the Catholic Church. How do they believe in Christ? They say Christ is two natures, one person. This is the belief of our beloved Catholic Church. He is two natures and one person. We come to the orthodoxy world. Orthodoxy world is divided into two main groups. There is the Eastern Orthodox and there is the Oriental Orthodox. Eastern like Russians, Greek, Rome Orthodox, you know the likes. And then on the other hand, the Oriental Orthodox is the Coptic, Armenian, uh, Syrian Orthodox and the Ethiopian Church. These are all Oriental Orthodoxy. Now the Oriental Orthodoxy it believes Christ is one nature and one person. Catholics believe he is two natures, one person. Oriental Orthodox believe he is one nature, one person. The Eastern Orthodox, Russian Greeks, they believe he is two natures, one prosipon. A prosipon is a Greek word, can mean a hypostasis and a person at the same time. I don't want you to remember this and please don't go there, right? Just for the sake of argument. Now, prosipon can mean a person and a, an integral aspect of the divine nature. Where I come from, <laughs> none of the above. <laughs> Jesus Christ is, or Christ, he is two natures, two hypostases, one person. And this was the main argument in the fourth century at the Synod of Ephesus in 431 AD between Pope Cyril IV, the Pope of Alexandria, the Coptic Church, and Nestorius, the Pope of Constantinople, Istanbul, Turkey, current times. Nestorius said, Christ is two natures, Two hypostases, one person. Cyril, Pope Cyril the Fourth, Pope of Alexandria, Coptic Church, he said, This is heresy because you are making two persons of Christ. Christ is only one person, can't be two. This is heretical. Therefore, Pope Cyril, who believe and still believe that Christ is one nature, one person, excommunicated absently Nestorius from Christendom. This is the belief of the church I belong to, but I'll say one thing. There was also a language barrier. There was a language barrier at the time. I don't know why I'm mentioning this man. Back then, the universal language was Greek. So the universal language in the fourth century was the Greek language like it is the English language of our time and age. So the universal language was Greek. That's why a lot of churches were influenced by the Greek language. In fact, in our beloved Coptic church, they have the liturgy of St. Basil. It is Greek. And they use a lot of Greek words in their liturgical services. No problems. It's a beautiful language. It's fine. So in the Greek language, prosipon can mean a person and a hypostasis. In the Aramaic Syriac language, which I speak, our church speaks, hypostasis is not a person. We call it in our language, pnoma. Pnoma comes from the word pnum in Arabic, or like icon. Pnoma is not a person. What is a person in my language? So I don't go for two, for 10 hours. Gnoma or parsopa or person in my language is parsopa. Parsopa is very similar to prosipon in Greek. So person as a person in my language, Syriac, Aramaic is parsopa. Now, to sum it up, all apostolic churches end up with one person. Then what's the problem? There is no problem. For God's sake, unite. 
if I, if I came to know that in my church, the church of the East, that this church believed that Jesus Christ is two people, I'll take these clothes off and I'll walk away from this church. But I know, stamp sealed, this church is holy and believes Christ is one person. And if I were to believe that the church where I come from, where I belong to, believed that Jesus Christ became God at the age of 30 only, meaning he was not God at, at the time of conception, at the moment of conception in the mother Mary's womb, then I will take these clothes off and I will deny this church. This church believes the moment the archangel Gabriel greeted the Holy Mother, the Virgin of all virgins, the moment he greeted her and he said, you will conceive by the power of the Holy Spirit from that moment of conception and forever and ever to come, Jesus Christ is perfect God, perfect man, and they were never separated, not even one slightest single moment. Jesus was perfect God and perfect man in the womb of the mother when he was born, when he was crucified, when he was buried, when he rose. He was always God and man together united with no separation. This is the belief of my church. And I can prove it to anyone who questions it. And this, Catholics, all orthodoxy, oriental and Eastern and this church have the same faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our beloved fathers, deacons, nuns, and congregation, all of you who are present in this holy church and those who are watching us through live streaming, I pray that the Lord Jesus is always with you, guiding you, protecting you, and showing you the way always, my beloveds. According to the church calendar, we are now on the fifth week of the Great Lent as far as the old Julian calendar is concerned. <clears throat> this year there is one week difference between Gregorian and Julian calendar for the Sunday resurrection. I don't like to use the word Easter. Easter is not a Christian word. Call it Sunday resurrection. Don't call it Easter. That was a pagan thing in the olden days. Ours is Sunday resurrection, it is not Easter. So <clears throat> I reminded myself to refer to Sunday resurrection instead of anything else. So the, this Sunday is the fifth Sunday of the Great Lent. The Gospel of today is from the Gospel of St. John and our church fathers have chosen um, Passages from two different chapters, chapter 7 and chapter 8 of St. John. Chapter 7 from verses 37 to 52, which is the end of the chapter. And then from chapter 8 from verses 12 to 20 inclusive. The Lord Jesus in chapter 7, verse 37 says that on the last day, the great day of the feast, he stood and he yelled out or he cried out saying, he who wants to receive the living waters, let him come to me. I will give him the living waters. What was this last day of the feast? Which feast was that? It was the feast of tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacle of the Old Testament is um, equivalent to the Feast of Transfiguration Day of the New Testament. Transfiguration normally happens in August. 
Transfiguration is where the Lord Jesus took three of his apostles, disciples, Simon Peter, and the two sons of Zebedee, James and John, and he took them up to this mountain called Tabor, Mount Tabor, which is in the north of Israel, in the region of Galilee. And it is the highest mountain in that region, if not in all of Israel. So the Lord, <clears throat> on the mount top, he transfigured, he changed. His clothes became whiter than snow. His face, his entire body shone brighter than the sun. He was transfigured on, this, uh, on the top of this mountain. The Lord went up to Jerusalem to the temple during this tabernacle feast. When you read in the beginning of chapter 7, you will realize that his cousins, whom the Bible refers to as the brothers of Christ, Jesus did not have physical brothers. We are done, dusted, and stamped sealed. We finished with this. Christ never had earthly, physical, biological brothers. Theologically, it's impossible. And anyway, he never had. That's the truth. Mary is the virgin of all virgins forever. She is the mother and the virgin as the, at, the, at the same time. In this, Mary is unique alone. There is no woman called mother yet remain as a virgin except in Mary. No human being. In this alone, she is different. For God's sake, treat her with respect and utmost veneration. For the Lord Jesus' sake. So his cousins, the brothers or the sons, the children of Mary, the sister of our holy Mary. So our holy mother had another sister called Mary as well. So her sister Mary had sons. Later on, some of these sons became part of the 12 disciples of the Lord Jesus. Saint Jude, the epistle writer, before the book of Revelation, St. Jude is the cousin of Christ, the son of Mary, the sister of our holy mother Mary. So, but at the beginning, these cousins did not believe in their cousin Jesus. Why they didn't believe? Because humanly, it is impossible to fathom this. Their cousin Jesus came at the age of 30 all of a sudden said to them, guess what, cousins? I am God. Oh, really? Have a fish burger, brother. Well, it's, it's fasting now. You can't have a fish burger. So, when the Lord said, I am God, they even said, he's gone out of his mind, and we are so embarrassed before people we don't want to show our faces to people because of our cousin Jesus. He is embarrassing, embarrassing us before the whole world. So they came to him and said, if you are truly the Christ, why don't you go up to Jerusalem on this tabernacle feast? You've got a great opportunity to prove who you really are as you claim to be. So go up to Jerusalem and do some miracles, show some signs, proving your God, and finish it off. The Lord said to them, your hour is always present before you, but my hour has not come yet. You go up to this feast, I'll go later. When did the Lord Jesus go to the feast? Halfway through. The feast used to go on for seven days. Halfway seven is three and a half. Halfway seven is three and a half. What I'm about to say is very deep 
I'm trying to put it in a nutshell. If I miss you, I do apologize. But I pray the Holy Spirit never miss you. Halfway through is three and a half. Tabernacle feast, transfiguration, is the feast where it talks about the second coming of the Messiah. Where the Lord Jesus will conquer and will rule over everyone and everything. His second coming is resembled and illustrated in the Feast of Transfiguration. It's a long story. So it is about his second coming. In this feast, the Lord Jesus went up to the temple to Jerusalem halfway, three and a half. When you go to the book of Revelation, John the Beloved is explaining to us what Daniel the prophet of the Old Testament is talking in his book. And by the way, we are in the process of having our commentary on the book of Revelation. We are on that journey. We'll get to chapter 13 where what I'm talking now will be discussed more in depth when we come to chapter 13 on our journey with our commentary on the book of Revelation. And chapter 13 has got everything to do with the 21st century, our time and age. One million percent. Everything to do with it. John, Daniel the prophet Daniel the prophet, I was just talking to the Lord for a second, whether I should continue or not. Daniel the prophet talks about the 70 weeks of Israel. By the way, the 21st century has got to do with the Jewish people in Israel. They're going to cop it. All the secret societies and the Freemasons, if they don't repent, their punishment is in this century, by the way. And look how ironic it is and how funny they are. They are trying to be God in this century. They will end up being nothing. The Lord has made a promise. <laughs> Before creating anyone, He's promised. I'll make sure no human being will ever be God and get away with it. Never. So they'll end up nothing in this very century. These secret societies. They'll go bankrupt. They'll lose everything. Wow. So, Bill Gates and the likes of you, the puppets of the secret societies, can you please find another job before you go bankrupt? Come, I'll give you a job, cleaner. Best job for you, my man. I'll give you a broom and a stick and a bucket and go and wipe all the amenities. <laughs> yeah, we need to start there. This is real men's job. This is real men. Not cowards, real men. They clean amenities, real men. Daniel the prophet talks about the Israelite nation going into exile in a prophetic way. He speaks of 70 weeks. Please pay attention. He speaks of 70 weeks. However, Daniel the prophet divides the 70 weeks into three segments. The first one, seven weeks. The second one, 62 weeks. The third one, one week. Now, when you read the book of Daniel, he is talking of weeks. You cannot, you know, have any commentary on it except as weeks. How can you know whether they are real weeks or is he speaking in a prophetic, symbolic way? 
well, we need to come to the book of Revelation. And the book of Revelation, John the Beloved says that about the last week of the prophet Daniel, the last week is time two times and a half. Time and two times, that's three. And a half is three and a half. And then he comes back and he says, 42 months. And then he comes back and says, 1,260 days. So John the Beloved is saying that those weeks of Daniel are literal years because the last week, I'm telling you, it is time two times and a half. It is 42 months. It is 1,260 days. 1,260 days is three and a half years. 42 months, three and a half years. Time, two times and a half, three and a half times. It is three and a half years. So the last week is seven years divided in half is three and a half years. Since the last week is in years, guess what? The 69 weeks are years. So when you multiply them into years, they are 490 years from the prophecy of Daniel till the coming of the Messiah. However, the last week was separated from the seven and the 62. Seven and 62, 69, and 170. <clears throat> Seven and 62, 69 weeks. 69 weeks multiplied into years, it is 483 years exactly. 483 years from the time Daniel the prophet prophesied about the coming of the Messiah. And he said, when the Messiah comes, he will be crucified. And upon his crucifixion, the holy city will be demolished. And there is no escape from this. The holy city, Jerusalem. He said, when the Messiah is crucified, Jerusalem will be brought to rebels. Titus, the general of the Roman army, came in 70 AD and wiped Jerusalem along with the temple of Solomon from the face of this earth. He wiped it. From the time Daniel prophesied till the crucifixion of the Lord and the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple, 483 years exactly to the dot. That's why the Jews do not accept the book of Daniel and their scripture. <laughs> he is the only prophet out of the entire prophecies of the Old Testament that talks precise dating of the coming of the Messiah. Daniel came 2,400 years ago. The Messiah had come. He's been 2,400 years since Daniel came to this earth. 483 years after the coming of Daniel, Jesus came and was crucified. The Jewish people are saying the Messiah hasn't come. That's why they denied the book of Daniel. Because if they accept the book of Daniel, then they have to say to themselves they are wrong. They have to go back and accept Jesus of Nazareth the son of Mary, son of the carpenter, who was crucified over 2,000 years as the true Messiah. They have to acknowledge it. They don't want. Why? Because they've got a, a head like a rock, stubborn. And we thank the Lord for their stubbornness. If it wasn't for their stubbornness, we wouldn't have been saved. So we thank the Jewish people for being hard-headed. We need to pray for them. So now, seven and 62 weeks, 69 weeks. 69 weeks converted into years, 483 years. Jesus came, was crucified, Jerusalem, the temple was destroyed. The Israelites went into exile. 69 weeks, Daniel separated them from the last week. Why? Because at the end of the 69th week, something happened. 
the church of Christ in the New Testament was born. When the church of Christ in the New Testament was born on Pentecost, the 50th day, when the Holy Spirit descended as tongues of fire on 120 people in that upper room, Holy Mother Mary was one of the, and the first of the 120 people, she was present there. The Holy Spirit descended on them in tongues of fire. This is where the church was born in the New Testament. From the time the church was born, the 69 weeks got separated from the last week. Why? Because the Lord said now to the Gentile world, the non-Jewish, the non-Israelite people, He said, now your time is different to the 70 week time of the Jewish. Your time is called the time of grace. The time of grace does not walk in the time of the world. I said before, I may miss some of you. I'm so sorry. The time of grace is from above. Doesn't go with the time of the world. The 70 weeks, which are the 490 years, they should have gone in sequence. Because time, you can't stop, you can't split, you can't separate. Time goes together. One minute after the other, one hour after the other, one day after the other, one year after the other. You cannot stop it. But Christ our Lord put the time of grace and separated the 69 weeks to the last week. Why? Because the last week is the last seven years, which the book of Revelation calls it the tribulation period tribulation the tribulation period is focused on the house of Jacob Israel the Jewish during the tribulation period you know what's gonna happen the door in the face of the church will be shut and the door of Christ in the face of the Jews will be reopened once again And I'm so sorry to say this, those who are waiting for the rapture, that ain't going to happen. So sorry. It ain't going to happen. There is no rapture. The church, there will still be Christians during the great tribulation. But those Christians, they will pray, Christ will not hear their, their cries. He won't hear them. Because the door of mercy would, have, would be shut. You know why? Because the church, when the great tribulation comes, the church would have denied the Messiah. Totally. We are not very far from the church denying the Messiah. It doesn't take a genius to figure out on how the church has behaved in the last two years. The least to say. The least. Until now, I can't fathom this. Look, if, if a person from the world comes and says what's been happening in the last two years of this pandemic, it is absolutely genuine. It is absolutely dangerous. There is a virus called Corona, Delta, Morona, Horona. The entire Greek alphabet have been used on the variants. Mr. Hazards is running out of alphabets. If someone that belongs to the world comes and says to me that what has been happening in the last at least to ease it's this has happened long time ago my beloved but you know what it's been brought up to the surface in 2020 but it's been it's been planned for for at least a hundred years prior to it a hundred years from the early beginning of the 20th century minimum the round table goes way way back have you heard of the round table if you haven't good don't worry about it a bunch of losers so says to me that what has been happening since 2020 it's genuine 
you know, the virus accidentally leaked out of Wuhan. Did it leak out of Wuhan, out of America, out of where, whichever, doesn't matter. If they said that this was a genuine mistake, no such thing. <laughs> but when a church leader, someone in a very high caliber position comes and, and supports this agenda, agrees with this agenda and push forth with this agenda to me the church is in denial of the Messiah period sold Christ so now the restrictions are removed they come back on the pulpit and they are now showing off as real Christians shut up where were you when the time was pressing, where were you? So don't show that you are a real man for Jesus. You are a liar. You're a coward. Shut your mouth and get out of that pulpit. If you were a true Christian, you should have spoke and cried out when the time was needed. The church is already walking in that time of denial of the Messiah. My beloved, I'm not scaring you. I'm not discouraging you. In fact, I'm just telling you for you to be alert that where our time is the end of times. Don't expect the world to live in peace. You know, these lost souls, these lost souls who worship Satan, by the way, their God is Satan. Yeah, yeah, it's a fact. That is a fact. And by the way, Satan does exist. It's not a myth. It's not an imagination. No, 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 no. Satan exists and he is ugly to the core. He is, if he appears here, everyone will run away. He is that ugly, he will scare you off. Yet the world is worshiping this piece of ugly one. When the church comes and says, if you jab yourself, you're showing an act of love for your neighbor, I rest my case. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The vaccine is not a vaccine, has got nothing to do with so-called coronavirus, period. Nothing. It was just planned by some people who worship Satan. And you will remember this, what I'm about, what I'm about to say now, you remember it. A time will come if the church does not wake up, if the church leaders do not repent and come back and bow before the Lord Jesus, I don't care what your rank is, how high and low, big or small your rank is. This is beside the point, my dear friend. This is not the time to show off. This is not the time to say, I am the Pope, I am the Patriarch, I am the Bishop, I am the Cardinal. You know what? Get out of that false imagination and get off your high horse and you better come down and bow before your Lord Jesus Christ who is the only good shepherd and the only head to the entire holy apostolic universal church Christ is the head of the church no one else so from the Pope to the least of the ecclesiastical orders you are all sheep Followers of Christ, you are not leaders, my dear friends. You're not leaders. There is only one leader. There is only one good shepherd. There is only one God, the head of the church, Christ the King. Period. So, this was planned by some people who worship Satan as their God. You know what they're trying to do next?
world's population, they want to reduce it, and that is in the agenda. The next thing they will do is technology that is going to explode around 20, 25, 26. The technology is already there, but they haven't released it. Next time you'll have this like an iPad, whatever it is, I don't know. So you've got one, your cousin has got another one in America. They open it, you open it, why travel? You'll be sitting in the lounge together having a cup of tea. Virtual reality. The younger generation especially, I beg of you, I beg of you. Take the iPad, take the i whatever, and step on it. Throw it at Bill Gates' face. At the beginning of this pandemic, some people misunderstood what I said in one of the lectures that we do on Friday evenings. I said, they, this so-called vaccine, I call it a jab, I don't call it a vaccine, because it's not a vaccine. And with all love and respect to all the doctors and the scientists and whoever they are, no matter what you say, I will never agree with you. Since Pfizer came from someone called Bill Gates, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Get a life. Get a life. This guy is standing in the open and is saying we need to reduce the world's population to around one billion people. You are nothing. Who do you think you are to decide whether to reduce or increase the world's population? You lost soul, you Satan worshiper. You go and bury yourself with your friend Jeffrey Epstein and shut your mouth. You piece of puppet. You and Anthony Fauci, World Health Organization, FDA, CDC, BBC, all of them. A bunch of liars. United Nations is the biggest lie of all. United Nations is the Tower of Babylon in the olden days. Human rights. The Tower of Babylon is all about human rights. Why did the people in Iraq build this tower? You know why? Because they said, we don't want to change our way of living. We love it going downtown, brother. We enjoy clubbing, we enjoy sniffing, we enjoy drinking and gambling, and we enjoy having fun with boys and girls and vice versa. And God is disagreeing with all of this. So what are we going to do? We ain't going to change God. So what we'll do, we'll build a tower. Its head will reach the heavens. So next time you bring flood, we'll escape from your flood and we'll say, thank you, God. Bye bye. We are God on earth. What these secret societies are doing now, nothing is new. They don't have the brain to create something new. They are the children of those of old. They took it from the ancient people. Same mentality, child sacrifice. They did that in the olden days. They would offer those babies to their false gods. Today they are offering these babies to Satan. In Australia including, in Ukraine including, in so many South American countries, in Europe, my beloveds, oh my God. And the church leaders are agreeing with this evil agenda. Isn't the church 
living in denial of Christ. <laughs> we are. The great tribulation will be focused on Israel. I don't want to scare you. Remember this. The day that comes, Israel is striked. It's World War III. Nuclear weapon. Do you know who's going to strike Israel? China and Russia together. With the, with the aid of the good old Iran. America is going to vanish. It won't be superpower anymore. It's already not there. Became a joke. With the current, <laughs> with the current leadership, man, it's a lovable matter. I'm not judging. I'm speaking biblical. America is going to perish. Then China will come full steam ahead. Now the secret societies are playing a game of chess. Okay, we'll give power to America with money because they got money. The Jews got money, baby. Oh, right? So we'll give money and make America great. America, the day that you were great was the day where you invoked the name of Jesus Christ, not the money of the Jews. Look at America now. Every single state, maybe one or two, I don't know, but the majority of the states in America have introduced laws that are offensive to the core of our Lord Jesus Christ. Every law they introduced is against the Lord. Look what has become of America. It became nothing but a joke. They want to introduce a law in one of the states now where the parents are not allowed to refer to their baby as he or she. They need to refer, refer to the baby as it. Because if they refer to the baby as he or she, depending on the gender, gender it is an insult to some other people. So the best thing, so we don't offend people, let us call it it, you piece of it. The Lord went halfway to the tabernacle feast. Halfway is three and a half years. The great tribulation is seven years, literal. The Lord out of mercy and love, because nobody is going to be able to withstand the immensity of the persecution. That's why God made it short, only seven years. And even the seven years, he divided it into half. The first three and a half years is the beginning of the pain. But the last three and a half years, Satan will devour the whole world and the church with it. He will destroy everything on the face of this planet in three and a half years. Satan will be released in this period. He will do things he wasn't able to do in his entire history. From the time he, from the time he was kicked out of heaven, he fell out of heaven till that day. He was never given power as such in those tribulation times, three and a half years. The Lord is saying to all of us, I am still here. In the gospel, he said, if you're thirsty, come, I'll give you the living waters. When did he say this? He said it in the midst of the tabernacle feast. The tabernacle is the great tribulation. In the midst of the great tribulation, he says, I am still Christ. I haven't changed. Come to me if you're thirsty. Well, we're going to be thirsty, all right, because at that time there is no more quenching. The whole world will be against the Lord Jesus, not any other false god. They will be deliberately against one. His name is going to be Jesus. That's it. Freemason don't give one penny, or not Freemason, Satan doesn't give one penny about Buddha, about Muhammad, about Krishna, none of them. He doesn't care who these people are. He only 
boils up when you invoke the name Jesus Christ. Why? Because this, is, this man is the only man that crushed his head, that put him to shame. So he can't stand the name of Jesus. He will fight his church. He couldn't win with Jesus. He wants to win with his children. And so many children will sell their master. Like they've done now. They received millions of dollars for opening their churches to be hubs of vaccination. In the name of law-abiding citizen, we need to be hypocrites, in other words. Hypocrites. Support the government. The government is evil. What are you going to support? The government is worshiping Satan. What are you supporting? The government is covering pedophilias. What are you supporting? What are you supporting? The Lord said, if you're thirsty in the midst of the tribulation, come to me. I'll give you the living waters. The living waters is my word. The Holy Bible. My holy Bible is the only truth. You want to receive the truth? Receive it from my book. No other book, no other place. The world will give you nothing but lies. I am the truth, Christ said. I am the truth. He is the truth. Come and receive the truth through my word. And when you receive my word, I am the light of the world. The light of the world, meaning that light is life because water is the source of life and the light is the source of life. So the word of Christ is the source of your life, my beloved. Be close to the church. Be close to the word of God. Be close to the Holy Bible. Come to Sundays receiving the Holy Communion. Come Fridays receiving the Holy Word of Christ through Bible preaching sessions. Come, my beloved. Do not delay. Do not walk away from the truth. Do not. So the church will deny the Lord. Because the Lord said it. We've tasted, the last two years, we've tasted the denial of the church of her beloved groom. 100%. I don't need to take a photo next to a politician regardless what their position is in order to run the church. <laughs> the Lord Jesus has treasury. <laughs> the Freemason will, we can't even dream of. So just because the government has given me grants, I go and be a hypocrite. I'll take that grant and I'll put it to good use and I'll say to the Prime Minister, sorry, I disagree with you. I, I'm not going to do what you want and I will still get the grant. And if you don't want to give me the grant, I don't want it. I don't need it. There are times you cannot compromise anymore. You cannot negotiate anymore. And you could be killed for it. It all depends how far you want to go. Because remember, Jesus, not to the world, to his own cousins, appeared to be someone with mental issues. Do you think they're not going to call me sick in the head? Look at you talking. This is not normal. Why are you talking like that? Why are you going against the government? Why are you mentioning these names? 
no, that's, that is, that is, that is sick. Don't talk like that. Because they said that to the Lord Jesus. Everyone who speaks the truth, the world will refer to them as mentally sick. And that's what's happening. The majority of people, they are worshiping liars. They don't want to come and listen to those who speak the truth. Caiaphas, the high priest, had all of Israel following him. Poor Jesus. Only 120 people out of Israel. Only 120. So even if he had a church, it would have been half, half empty maybe. Or very empty. Caiaphas. Woohoo! Thousands upon thousands upon thousands every Sabbath. But when there were like big events, you know, millions coming to Caiaphas. Poor Jesus. 120 people today in the millions they follow the liars but only few follow those who speak the truth what has changed only technology has changed nothing has changed same old same old poor Jesus even though I'm a wreck I'm a wretched of a servant and I'm useless and I give you a hard time, Lord. But you know that I love you. I love you, Lord. Man, I love you. I just eat him. You know what? When I see him, I'm going to pinch him so hard, I'll make him scream from pain. I don't care, he can call all the angels, I'll bash him up all. Because I've got my mother with me, Mary. <laughs> I'll pinch him, I'll eat him, I'll, I'll smack him. And then I will lick his sandals. I will lick them. And then I'll wipe them on my face for my face to be brighter than the sun and whiter than the snow with the sandals of my sweetheart. I love you, her. S Satan just get lost. I pray for the world. I pray for every human being to come back to Christ. There is no one else but him. Young men and women, moms and dads, grandparents, all ages, Jesus is the only one. I beg of you, don't let that moment go where you are not with Christ and invoking his name. You want to play soccer? Play with the Lord. You want to go for a drive? Drive with the Lord. You want to sit down with your friends? Sit down, but also talk of the Lord, not just empty things. Come with your friends to the church for a change. Enough going out clubbing, enough going out and having fun. Have fun in the house of the Lord. Come and spend time with this good-looking bishop, brother. You want to dance with somebody? Dance with me, baby. Why do you want to dance with the world? The world is evil. The world is deceptive. The world is poison. Come to Christ where he gives you honey. Where he gives you full nourishment. And enrichment and fulfillment. Jesus lives forever. And whoever has Jesus will live forever with him as well. Amen. Amen. So tribulation, not tribulation. We're going to have fun with the Lord, baby. We will still preach while the rockets are going, exchanging between the countries. Man, when the nuclear head comes from China to Australia as a present. Did I just say that? <laughs> 
when the nuclear head comes from China to Australia as a present, shout and say, Hallelujah, Lord Jesus, I'm about to meet you face to face. I cannot wait. Mr. Xing Jingming, thank you so much for the rocket because you have expedited my encounter with the Lord face to face. So, ni hao, hao ho, thank you, goodbye, see you later. <laughs> Let them play in the mud and the filth, come and play with Christ. If you know any rich man or woman, tell them we want to build a youth group center. <laughs> Donate. We want to have our place of refuge. Boys, next time, Tell your friends, come with us. Let's go to church. Girls, tell your friends, let's go to church. Come with us. Cousins, family members, whoever you have in your life, invite them. Encourage them. Bring them along with you. Fill the church with people. All of you, if every single one of you bring another or two people with you, that's it, the church is full. Doesn't take huge effort. Just bring another person. Let's bow our heads, my beloved. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our good God and full of mercy, our good God and full of mercy, whose grace and mercy is poured upon all. Pour, my Lord, the compassion of the delightfulness of your love upon your servants, and again transform them in the hope of renewal to the life of repentance. Renew in them your Holy Spirit, by whom they are sealed for the day of salvation. Purify them by your compassion from all flesh and spiritual blemishes, and assure the hope of their faith by the aid of your grace and instill the walks of their behavior and the paths of righteousness. Please them along with the saints in your kingdom by the assurance of the hope of their faith in the adoption as your children and in the joy of your absolving mysteries. Empower them by the aid of your mercies to observe your commandments and fulfill your will, to confess to confess, worship, and praise your holy name, the Lord of all, Father and Son, and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. May the Lord Jesus bless you, guide you, and protect you. May the Lord Jesus always give you the strength to carry on and come to the church on a regular basis. Always. Come to the church, my beloved, always. And let us put our hands together and do something for the Lord Jesus. We want to raise this young generation, young men and women for Christ. Let's do something. Let's build this base of youth for the Lord Jesus. Let's do it, my beloved. Come and let us talk about it and see what we can do because there is a lot to be done. There is a lot to be done and we need to do it. And don't say, I am Catholic. Don't say, I am Orthodox. I am this and I am that. Please, 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 when the time comes, neither Catholicism nor Orthodoxy is going to come to your rescue. The only one that is going to come is Jesus Christ. I am not saying that you deny your Catholicism or deny your Orthodoxy. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying do not let this be a hindrance and an obstacle stone for the children of Christ to come together. We all share a lot of things in common. We all share foundational things in common. So let us come and unite and build a beautiful, beautiful family for the Lord Jesus. Family for the Lord Jesus. Family for the Lord Jesus. 
I'm Orthodox. I'm sure there are Catholics here and non-Catholics either. Maybe there are Protestants in here as well. Oh, be careful, Bishop. Relax. 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 Being fanatic about your faith is very narrow-minded. Speak the truth, no reservation. But don't be fanatic. I'll tell you what my faith is, but I will still hug you as a Catholic and as a Protestant. But this is my faith. Jesus is neither Catholic nor Orthodox no Protestant. Jesus is God. But I will never deny my roots, the apostolic teachings, over my dead body. I will never deny it. This is the true teaching. But we need to reveal Christ and the truth. And give Christ in the truth. And be together as one family. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Let us pray, peace be with us. The grace of the Holy Spirit be with you, with us, and with all who receive him in the kingdom of heaven forever. Amen. Amen. With you, with us, and with all who receive him in the kingdom of heaven, give glory to the living God. Glory be to Him.